Hello viewers, I am Dr. Shailesh, uh, Senior Consultant at Shaker Eye Hospital. Today I would like to talk to you all on a very important topic on a squint or strabismus. Commonly, the public will tell this as an abnormal eye movement in a child or adult. It affects all age groups more common in children. So we call it as a squint or a strabismus in medical terminology. But uh, as a, a common uh, word that we use is a uh, deviation of the eyeball or misalignment of the eyeball or abnormal eye movements. It's the various ways they, they present with and the various ways the people or the parents understand about the disease. So what is this squint? So just to show this photo, any child or adult will have straight eyes. Both eyes are straight. There is no deviation this way or this way or there is no deviation inside in right eye or left eye. So they will have straight eyes. But in some situations like you can see these eyes, so the eye balls is going inward and that is called as convergent squint. So these kind of squint we have to pick up early and treat them early. So now what we want to know is Squint means that the abnormality in the eyeball where the eyes instead of being straight they are deviating either outwards or inwards that is one thing that is called squint. Now when it is seen in some people it is seen in, uh, in children especially it is seen right from the early uh, childhood that is right from birth itself some children have or some children develop after 6 months or 8 months of age then there are different types of squints here. One is the inward squint, that is the eyeball going inside. Another one is the outward going squint, that is exotropia, what we call it. There are two types of squints. Another type of squint or abnormal eye movement is called nystagmus, where the eyeball keeps shaking. Sometimes shaking inside, sometimes shaking outwards. And sometimes it is stable. So these are the various types of squint part. Now, in some situations, the parents complain that there is no squint, but at times the eyeball keeps deviating in one direction. Like they say in whenever they take a photo or they go to a party, then they see that the eye child's eye goes out or someone says that the eye child's eyesight or the eye alignment is not correct. But when you see, then again eye looks straight. So this is one situation where a child can have squint but it may not be picked up. This is called intermittent squint. The squint is manifested on and off. Whenever the child is very weak or fatigued or not focusing on any object, the eye tends to deviate outwards. This is also called, uh, this is also a type of squint which is called intermittent squint where the child is not able to hold on to the uh, eye, eyes in a straight position. So this is called intermittent squint. So there are one constant squint, one is intermittent squint. Constant squint where the squint is all present all the time, either it is inward or outward. Then the intermittent is, it comes and goes on and off. Sometimes, some days it won't be there, sometimes it will be very frequently seen. So these are the types of squints. So who all will develop squint? This can be seen very early in age well as in the acquired form where it can be seen in the adulthood also. In children, it's commonly seen after about 6 years of age where the child slowly and its developmental period develops a squint in either in the inward way or the outward squint. Then in acquired form, the children squint can be developed in case of adults also and in some situations where there is a trauma or any head injury or any internal problems, the squint can manifest. Especially in, even in cases of about 40 plus or 60 plus age group, we see squint and there will be doubling in chairs. So the person suddenly says that he can't see clearly and he will see two images where the eye starts developing squint. Eye will go outward or inward along with the drooping of the eyelid. Sometimes the eyelid changes can also happen. These are commonly seen in the elderly age group and usually in diabetic and hypertensive patients. But this is less common as compared to the childhood squint. So now how do we diagnose this squint and how do they present? The presentation you all know, it is very obvious that when you see the face of a child or adult, the eyes are, doesn't look straight and it looks slightly deviated. Sometimes the child will um, maintain a position in an abnormal way like the head tilt or the chin elevation. So they will be lifting their chin or depressing their chin or they will be tilting their head or they will be turning their face to one side, right or left side. So they all are using different forms of uh, squints which are manifested in form of uh, chin elevation or depression, in form of face turn left and right 
in term in form of uh, head tilt to left or right they are on to compensate for the split that is developing in the child so these are the way of how this uh, child will present sometimes in intermittent type of schools the child will keep on squeezing the eyes or when they go to the sunlight outdoor they will close one eye they will feel uh, that that time that is the time when the skin becomes more prominent and the child finds that it is difficult to focus and concentrate so they try to close one eye so that is called photophobia so children can have uh, various ways of manifesting skin like the uh, alignment itself the eye sometimes in nystagmus they keep shaking and becomes uh, stagnant in one position and they maintain different head postures and when they go outdoor they will close their eyes or close one eye and in some situations they, they really complain that they see two images on the plane they get trip on a uh, trip uh, when they were climbing the stairs or something so these are the various ways of squint being manifested and the age group i already told now how do we pick up is this is only picked up by an eye specialist or a stabismologist or a squint specialist you have to visit eye doctor there we will have a proper check up a thorough eye check up of a child or adult or whatever it may be usually in children we have a proper eye check up in the form of refractive or all the does the child have a glass number or not many times after putting drops or ointment for few days and then examining the child for any uh, refractive error or the number we we find out lot of people having number so we correct those numbers and many times the child skin can also get corrected if they wear the glass the child skin can also get get corrected this is one type of skin upon so they're using their accommodative power to overcome the skin once you place a bright glasses then the skin gets neutralized so that is one way of treating the other way of uh, assessing the skin are also uh, assessing how frequently the child is squinting then we do some uh, vision charts the different types of vision uh, check up we do along with the contrast as well as, well as the stereo acuity test will assess the depth perception of the child so in all these skins what is compromised is the one is the vision and the stereo acuity that's why we say what happens if we leave the skin like that it is not a sign of any you know, earlier we used to say it's a sign of luck and all golden our grandparents used to say it is not true so any child with uh, squint we have to be examined properly check their glass number and then start the treatment right away so many times we start the treatment in the form of glasses in some of the children we use glasses in some situations we advise patching because once a eye has got squinting the eye gets neglected and it will go in for amblyopia or what is called a lazy eye because the, that that eye the affected eye or the squinting eye is not being used it will go in for you know, uh, lower vision that is called uh, lazy eye so we give a patching for that eye so that the vision improves so we give exercise for the abnormal eye and then help to improve the vision and in some situation the squint also tends to improve the vision improves the squint frequency also gets reduced this is one form of treatment apart from glasses patching or uh, occluding the eye that is one thing the next step of treatment many times will be squint surgery if the squint is not getting controlled or it is not getting corrected by glasses then we have to go in for squint surgery in squint surgery what we do is we will align the eyes huh? we will adjust the eye muscles there are six eye muscles and in each eye so we will adjust this horizontal muscles or vertical muscles depending on the type of squint we do measurement of the squint and we have to calibrate and then we do the stereo acuity and other visual parameters we take into consideration then we will assess which eye to be operated usually the abnormal eye or the squinting eye is operated in some situation we have to operate on both the eyes and to make the eyes in a straight position so that is done by squint surgery under general anesthesia in a child and in uh, local anesthesia in adult so after surgery also you may have to wear glasses and in some situations patching also so most of the times it is uh, cosmetic purpose we do in adults but along with that in children it is not possible cosmetic it also has a high grade of visual attainment that is the stereo acuity has to be maintained so whenever we we see a squint we should not uh, feel that it is a sign of luck we have to get it checked by a proper eye specialist where it is properly ascertained especially in children i would uh, really stress once again any child who is of lesser age group of 5 to 6 years of age group showing any small sign of any squint or deviation in type or please get it checked so that we will prevent the eyeball from going into further squinting as well as further going in for the amblyopia or laziness so if we treat early many times we may have to operate at age of 1 year itself or 2 years to correct the inward going squint so if you operate and make the eye straight the child will start seeing better then the laziness of the eye reduces then the stereo acuity and the depth perception can be preserved so it is our responsibility to see that the child is properly examined properly approached and treated 
on time so that the other um, part of the uh, visual acuity is preserved. So please feel free to contact us and uh, feel free to uh, take help of a medical professional for screen in child as well as adults. Thank you.